Hello friends, good morning. Uh, welcome to CC Live Lectures. Dear friends, in this session we will be continuing our lecture series on uh, word literature. In this series we would be talking on uh, Latin, uh, Latin American writer Jorge Luis Borges. And today uh, take this topic we have our subject expert Dr. Anand Prakash with us. Dr. Prakash is a retired professor, Department of English, University of Delhi. So, with this, I would like to welcome uh, Sir to our studios and request him to start the lecture. Thank you, Asmita, <coughs> and welcome viewers. Uh, today's discussion would be uh, under the World Literature Series, and uh, we organized lectures on this. Already, there have been more than 10 lectures, and uh, uh, today's uh, uh, topic uh, is the main, uh, you know, a uh, short story author from uh, Latin America and he comes from Argentina and his name is as announced by our anchor Jorge Luis Borges. And uh, this writer uh, initially was a poet. Uh, he wrote poetry and uh, there you know he uh, uh, presented images, symbols uh, in his own subtle way. But then in the middle of his career he started writing short stories and then he became a major short story writer in Latin America. He comes from Argentina. He was born in 1899 and uh, he would have been today, if he were alive, uh, 119 years. And uh, his name is associated also with uh, magic realism. This term you would have heard, you would have heard of, you, you are, in fact we discussed this term in one of our lectures. So uh, he is one of the first magic realists in literature. Now, what does the term magic realism mean? I just uh, repeat what, what, what I said and what others uh, uh, lecturers you know, uh, in this series also said, is that there is a realism. There is a sense of something there in front of me, in front of you. And if you uh, take interest in that, if you understand that, if you write about it as a writer, then you know, you are you're a realist. But there are people who see not just the image in front of them, they see much more than the image. They, they, they go into the nature of the image, they go into the background, they connect the background with the image and sometimes you know they also fantasize, they also you know give free rein to their uh, fantasy and uh, this fantasy can be anything then, then a human being can look in fantasy not as a human being but as a tree, as, as, as an animal, as, as, as the wide sky and all these things you know become a part of the reality that I imagine to be there in front of me. So, uh, Borges ex experimented with uh, this kind of reality in his own inimitable manner and he became a sort of father of magic realism. There are people you know who learned this uh, art, this, this method from him and uh, he was the, uh, he was one of the first, he was, you can say that he was the pioneer of magic realism. So he was born in 1899, he died in 1986. Uh, 1899 and then he died in 1986, 87 years and he was born in uh, uh, Buenos Aires which is in Argentina and uh, see his uh, origin, he is from Spanish language, English language and very remotely also Portuguese and he is a Jewish uh, origin also. So imagine all these things uh, you know being there uh, together uh, in his sensibility. What does it reflect? It reflects, you know, that uh, the sensibility and the vision of the Latin American writer is very complex. One doesn't know which aspect of the personality will emerge at some point of time and take over the imagination of the author. In this case, this is particularly true. Uh, Borges uh, would, you know, bring in philosophy very clearly in his short stories. He never wrote a novel and uh, he wrote a number of short stories and in fact, uh, if you read his short stories, uh, sometimes they are 10 pages, sometimes 15 pages, sometimes just 2 pages. But when you read, then you go through an experience. You go through a very wide range of, uh, you know, uh, area uh, of, of interest, of, of you know, uh, activity of life and experience. And you realize that in those 10 or 12 pages, in fact, the entire experience of the world has been squeezed. And uh, that is what, you know, uh, will, will be there. I will give you one or two examples of a short stories where, you know, this person has that kind of, you know, uh, width, that kind of breadth, that kind of depth uh, in, in his presentation. So he is from, uh, he writes uh, uh, in Spanish, but then he has read uh, European literature, he has read English literature, he is uh, uh, conversant with the trends 
that are there in the writing of, of entire Europe. And uh, since uh, he, um, Europe has been at the center of uh, you know, uh, uh, knowledge, uh, uh, industry, knowledge activity, therefore one can say that he truly represents humanity at the world level. So, he is a proper world writer for us. Uh, <clears throat> then further complicating this background of uh, you know uh, Borges is that his parents were from intellectual middle class. Middle class can be of many kinds, uh, the, uh, an accountant in a bank also is a middle class person. Uh, but then his parents were intellectual middle class, which means that this was in his blood that he would think, he would use his mind. And he descended from military and political figures. In his, in near uh, in, in among his relatives would be people who are active in military and also political figures. Now, military and politics, they do not generally mix. A military person is generally on the field, either he is planning the fight or he is just you know taking part in the fight directly. And then there is politics. Politics is the uh, planning part of the whole country of which military action can be just one little segment. But then he was in touch in his life with both the military and the political figures. So, you can see you know the, the, the kind of variety that would be there in his writing. Not that he would write uh, uh, picking up a topic, picking up a, you know uh, uh, an area of interest and then talk about it. No. All these things would be there in his mind, in his imagination and when he wrote then these things would be indirectly reflected in whatever he wrote. So, it is that kind of you know complex personality that Borges is. His family was linked with Argentine national independence. Uh, there was a movement in, in, in the early part of the uh, in, in the in the 19th century and in the early part of the 20th century and this independence movement was a national movement. So, there were colonizers, they had come from uh, you know uh, Europe and uh, they had uh, you know uh, <coughs> started exploiting the natural and other resources, human resources of the country and then Argentine kind of identity also was forged in the process. People started you know talking about their own country, about their own culture, about their own ways of life and then this became a political movement. And when the political movement was going on, then uh, Borges was a part of it. What does it mean? It means that he is a person of the masses. He is a person who takes interest in the pains and uh, you know uh, miseries of, of, of the masses whom he faces every day, uh, of, of, of whom of, of which he is a part also. So, uh, national movement, national independence movement was in his blood. So, uh, when he writes uh, short stories, then somewhere or the other this can be visible. His early life was in Geneva and Spain. There he got his education, not in Argentina, not in Latin America. He, he, he spent his time in Geneva and then in Spain and from there he came to, at, at the age of 20, he came to Argentina and then you know he started writing. His initial writing as I said uh, was in the poetic form and uh, he was in touch with some of the latest uh, literary movements in France uh, and, and elsewhere in Europe and uh, he was uh, associated with the modern expressionist form. Now, expressionist form is a form of art uh, in the early 20th century and uh, these people you know are those who were in, uh, into expressionism. Uh, they would use words, they would use phrases uh, in, in such an intense manner that uh, the, 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 the world through those words would become real for us. And uh, they will not generally give ideas, they, they, they will not tell you what to think, what to feel, they, they will not tell you what to uh, you know accept. What they would say, they will show you something through words and those words will be so powerful that they would start expressing themselves uh, in, through, through their nature. So, he uh, which means that he uh, became aware of the power of language uh, through this kind of expressionism uh, that you know was there in his poetry. Uh, then uh, other influences, because these influences would help us in understand uh, you know the, the, the nature of uh, short stories that he wrote. Uh, he was closer in his vision and his understanding to the American writer of the time. So, America also you know at that point of time, Latin America and America they are, they are quite close to each other. Uh, it is the same continent, only that you know these countries uh, are away from uh, the, the, the American uh, states. But then there is some kind of interaction always. There are people who speak Spanish in America and these people, uh, Latin American people mostly speak Spanish and, and write in Spanish. So, uh, the main concerns of the American writer of that time 
when uh, 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 Borges was writing, which is from let's say 1920 onwards um, up to uh, 1986 when, when he died, uh, the concerns of uh, the, the time were war. In fact, uh, uh, the world had seen two wars, the First World War in 1914 and the Second World War in 1939. And uh, he was a witness to uh, both the wars. The first, um, in the First war, World War, he would be in his teens. He, would, he was a teenager. But when the Second World War happened, then he was a good 40 years. So imagine that his concern, like the concerns of the American uh, youth and the American writer, were war, industrialism, and modern European art. I talked about European art. It was there. It was very subtle. It was very, it was very expressive, very symbolical. It was very intense. And uh, in the middle is industrialism. What is industrialism for a writer? Of course, all of us know what industrialism is. Uh, it's the rise of industries. There are big machines. They, they, they are put at a place, and it's called a factory. Then people come. They work there. And nobody individually produces anything. Machines produce. People work on machines. And uh, every 10 years, there is an addition to the machines. Every five years, there is an addition to machines, which means that it keeps expanding. And when industrialism expands in its production, then there is a bigger market than before. Because you, you can produce more. And you, you want that more people should buy. And more people should be employed in production. So all these things you know, uh, are a part of the social process. And industrialism also became a concern for him. Is industrialism good or bad? I asked this question as a, as a, as a viewer. Uh, when uh, there are more industries, when there, there, when there is more work, then there is more variety. Uh, is it good or is it bad? So maybe I can ask you, Nasmita, whether uh, industrialism would be good or bad. Well, what is your opinion? Sir, it depends on the country's uh, situation. Yes. It, uh, if, the, uh, if the country is progressive, it may take it as a positive initiative. But yes. where the country like India, where have the large population, they need work, they need, need something to work with. So they need, uh, in fact, industry. Because no. then they, they'll get the work. No? Yeah. No, they, they just, just try, to, try, to, try to think. Yeah, in, uh, I think, as I think, that in large population, industrialization can help giving uh, people work or job mm -hmm. and in vice versa it uh, has a different scenario also that it will take job from the artisan people and all. Very good. That yeah. is a very nice point. When, when machines are brought in then people lose their jobs. Yes. Th that happens. So on the one side there is increased production on the other side some people lose jobs. Yeah. And the other thing that you also might think of is that uh, you know, when there is industry, then people start shifting from the village to the towns. Yes, yes. And uh, pe people, you know, who are there in the villages, old people, yeah. girls, uh, children, yes. and, 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 and the man, you know, who works, he's yeah. there in, 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 in the factory, in, yeah. in a town, then the family is neglected. Yes. That then, you know, the, the, there is a kind of neglect, general neglect of the whole village. Yes. So, there are all these things. So, writers start talking about this when, you know, life is affected by the circumstances outside the home. And uh, th th this person was uh, a witness to the rise of industrialism uh, in Europe in general and in Latin America in particular. And uh, in this case, he was closer to the American writer of the day. So he wrote poetry till 1930 and around 1940, when the Second World War was going on, he took to short story writing. What is a short story? Short story is a short form of fiction. Uh, and uh, it's, it's a uh, in India, story is very popular. Uh, I, I've been you know, comparing uh, short stories elsewhere with the short story tradition in India. And in India, every grandparent is a very fine short story teller. You, you go to your nani, you go to your dadi in the evening, you're a child of let's say five or six years or ten years, and your dadi always has, your nani always has a short story ready to be told. So short story is that kind of a thing which entertains, which, which you know engages your attention which tells you about characters, uh, you know, which, which also uh, gives wings to your imagination. You, re you hear the story, then you think about it as a child, and when you sleep, then sometimes you see the same story also in your dreams. So short story has that kind of a thing. And this writer took majorly to short story writing in the middle of the uh, 20th century, around 1940. So uh, he took completely to short, short narrative genre narrative, uh, the story that you tell. Uh, that there is a group of people uh, you know, uh, sitting before you and you narrate to them. You tell them. So, uh, that, that's why you know, a short story is also called a tale because you tell. 
narrate uh, it's a narrative because you narrate and uh, narrating and telling or presenting a tale means that there will be a beginning you will say okay now i'll tell you a story and then you will say well, there was a king and uh, all those things then the story becomes a bit interesting in the middle and people start asking questions from you not directly but in their own minds and then finally you say there was a problem it started in the beginning it expanded scope in the middle and finally it was resolved and when it is resolved then the story comes to an end so the story has this kind of an element so uh, it's a it's a ready made kind of entertainment for us <clears throat> that you know we we know the uh, we we know something is going to happen so we are curious then the, the uh, you know scope of the story is spread before us the 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 the, the, the carpet is spread before us and finally when the uh, thing is resolved when it comes to an end then we say okay now the short story is ended so please go home so it's that kind of a thing this person thought that short story was very close to the way life is lived by people how think about this how is life lived you enter a school at the age of 5 at the age of 17 or 18 you leave the school now this is a short story you can tell it on that day i went and on this day i left and in between there are 10 years and in 10 years certain things happened and then the story is complete then the other short story is that you get a job and when you get a job you leave your home and the first day is of the job is very important but when you retire or when you change a job then the last day also is very important so just just see another story the story which has a beginning a middle and an end and this person was very you know uh, interested in uh, this particular form of writing where things will always begin at some point and end at some point it's not like poetry poetry can begin from anywhere it can it, it may just leave you in the middle and uh, there is a mood at the end but the, the problem is not resolved but when this when there is a story then there is going to be an issue there is going to be a problem it will be it it will you know uh, attract your attention towards it and finally uh, when the problem is solved then you will be happy so he took to this particular form and he became a master storyteller a proper master storyteller an expert where when, when you read his story even if it's a difficult story you want to remain stuck to it that's the kind of art you know that he developed and his writing was not easy let me tell you very clearly uh, there are stories which i was had to read twice to understand but then i read them twice i read them three times and then i understood and every time i read i was enjoying it i was learning more from it so not that uh, it's it just a ready made kind of entertainment it kind of kind of a spoon feeding no he he compels you to think he he compels you to go back to the initial sentence because later on he'll say something about that sentence and you'll say okay exactly what did he say in the beginning so you go back and then you realize oh yes sometimes he'll give you a very interesting dialogue and he will not tell you uh, who the speaker is so then you have to find out who the speaker is so we once again go back to the beginning when the talk started so it's that kind of a trick you know that he plays on the reader because of which his short story telling is very good so borges <coughs> uh you know uh, published uh, a number of uh, collections of short stories uh, in the middle of his career later on he also started commenting on our uh, trends of literature he gave interviews he gave uh, uh, you know Uh, he discussed things he he gave lectures and he became a part of literary and even political movements and uh, literary and political movements can't be separated when you are a writer you express your opinion about something that is happening around you and then you know uh, that that opinion that you give pleases some people and displeases some others so if it pleases some people and displeases some others and the people who are pleased are in the regime and displeases the are you displeases the people who are also in the regime then you are a political person so that kind of politics is there in literature and uh, he was uh, both you know politically active and literarily or creatively or imaginatively active his area was culture but then in culture he could bring in everything so it's that kind of a story that he was able to uh, present for the benefit of the reader so uh, one comment about him is that is stories are tales of the fantastic what does fantastic mean fantastic means they have a lot of fantasy in it a lot of imagination in it it's not real it doesn't appear real but then it's a fantasy it's a kind of a dream you have a dream in dream there are certain things which are there in life but then the dream is a dream you know it is not real so uh, his his stories you know take you into the world of 
dreams and they are fantastic in the sense because they use fantasy. Then of the hyperbolic, he sometimes is hyperbolic. What is hyperbolic? When you exaggerate, when somebody is let us say uh, uh, as tall as 6 feet and you make him uh, tall by another 20 feet and you say this, this man was as tall as the tree. So, when you say that then in fact you are indulging in hyperbole uh, uh, and uh, this person would always exaggerate. He would always you know say things in such a manner that people start wondering what, what does he mean they are not there in life, but then he would exaggerate. Now, through exaggeration he would create a sense of interest in you, interest in the reader and uh, then you know you start thinking as to why he exaggerated. If somebody you know is, is, is very generous and he has 10 rupees in his pocket and then you know this person gives all the 10 rupees to you plus his shirt, then it is exaggeration. So, the person may not be uh, giving the shirt, but, but the, the writer can say that he also gave his shirt. So, this exaggeration you know, helps you understand the nature of the person. They are hyperbolic also in stories. So, they are fantastic, they are hyperbolic, but are never content with fantasy in the simple sense of facile wish fulfillment. He will not waste his fantasy on ordinary things. He would fantasize about things which are which look impossible. And then you know you, under, you start understanding the impossible also. So, this, the, this, this combination of three words is very important. It is this you know that uh, takes him apart from many other writers who would like to persuade you, convince you this is what I just said, this is what uh, this, this is what you have to believe in. The, he does not say all this. He says ok, I saw it and then he takes you into the land of fantasy. Then he starts uh, you know uh, using the hyperbole, the, the exaggeration and then you know uh, he does not uh, you know uh, give direct answers. So, it is a different kind of a story and the experience therefore, is going to be entirely of a new kind. <laughs> now, <laughs> there are a few opinions I would like to give before I in, in the second part of the lecture I uh, will give you some instances from the short stories, but just see how this writer is being viewed by his contemporaries. There are great writers in, 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 the, in the 20th century, they read his writing, they also took influence from him, because before uh, he started writing people did not write short stories like this and they were you know mesmerized. They were so influenced by him that the, the appeal was so great in his writing that they started copying, copying his style and it is very difficult to copy the style of a master. So, he was a master of short stories and when people read then they would start wondering, they would be deeply influenced, they, they, they will copy his style, they will write you know a uh, uh, word of praise about him more and more, they will uh, treat him as a kind of a fashion of the time in literature, all those things happened. And uh, I, I just give you uh, one or two instances of the appreciation that this man earned. For instance, this uh, <coughs> statement by Woodall, he says Borges was the quintessential writer's writer. Quintessential is just essential, just fundamental basically. So, he was basically a writer's writer. What does it mean? You are a reader's writer, you, you write for the readers, but he says he was a writer's writer. What does it mean? It means that even writers learned from him. So, uh, he will for instance talk about the art of writing he would talk about language, he would talk about the appeal that is concealed in language uh, and he, he will use words and uh, he will use other words later and he will use them in a different sense and uh, uh, the, the readers will not understand the word easily. So, sometimes you know they, they will ask others as to what the word meant and then the writer said, but he is using this word deliberately, why is he doing it? And then they realize ok, he used this word this way and because of which the story became powerful. So, the writers then would say if he can make words powerful, what about us? We can do the same. So, they started following his trend. So, in this sense you know he is a writer's writer, writers learn from him. And then he says uh, the, the commentator, he proved himself to be one of the towering figures of literature in Spanish. Spanish literature is very rich, uh, the, the modern Spanish literature starts from the renaissance onwards and Spain you know in the, in the 15th and 16th, 16th centuries was one of the great powers of the world. Uh, it, it was supposed to be even greater than England and France and it created, uh, it, it produced literature of a very high uh, quality and from then on uh, there have been masters one after another in the Spanish writing. I am talking of the span, uh, Spain outside uh, uh, Latin America 
and then you know Latin American uh, uh, countries were colonized. Then, then uh, people from Spain shifted there, they settled down there, and then Latin America or Latin American countries became independent countries in their own right. So, he is then one of the towering figures, one of the great figures, one of the highest figures. So, this is the praise that he gets. And the second quotation is, he creates, and this quotation is from André Moroy, uh, a French uh, critic, he says, writer, he creates outside time and space, he creates first thing is creates. What does create mean? He, he does not simply write, he creates. There is something which is not there, but then he will create with the help of words. So, there is a picture that can be created with colors. So, you create the picture because colors were there even earlier and uh, you, you bought the colors from the market, you, you got the brush also, but then when you had a paper or when you had a canvas and you had colors and brushes, then with those brushes and th those colors, you create something on the on, on, on the page, on, on the paper. So, he creates that way. He creates with the help of not colors and brush, he creates with the help of words, something. So, he is that, kind of, that, uh, that kind of a creator. Outside time and space, is it possible to go outside time? You are, uh, let us say in, in 2018, can you go out of time and, 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 and leave this time and go to 2050? Can you go? Can you move out of this time and go back to 1550? So this is going outside time, space. You live in India. You live in Delhi, but in your imagination, you can start thinking of Australia. You never seen it, but then you can create your own Australia in your own mind. You can create your own Africa in your own mind by just hearing something about Africa and America, Africa and Australia. You can start telling people and feeling yourself also that well this is what we ha would be happening there and let me create it. So, he, you can transcend and cross time as well as space and he does it and he does it so well. Outside time and space, imaginary and symbolic worlds. The worlds are not peopled by men and women, but they are peopled by other creatures also. So, they are imaginary worlds. Those worlds are not there in reality, but then he talks about those worlds. And when he talks about those words, then people listen to him, read him with interest. So it's a sign of his importance that in placing him, in placing him, when you place him, then uh, strange and perfect works can be called to mind. Uh, I think this is time to stop uh, at this stage. I will take up this last point in, in the beginning of the next part of the discussion. And uh, till then, uh, you have to wait. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much friend uh, thank you so much sir for this session dear friends we will be continuing with the same writer in the next session also so stay tuned and keep watching thank you
hello friends welcome back let's continue with the session what we are having in the first session so we will we were talking on latin american writer jorge luis borges and uh, let's continue with this topic uh, with our expert uh, dr anand prakash so let's continue sir thank you asmita <coughs> and uh, welcome back viewers for the second part of the lecture and uh, i was in the middle of um, a comment that a writer made about uh, uh, Borges, and uh, I'll read it again to to get you back into the mood, and and and, and the and the mood. He creates outside time and space, imaginary and symbolical worlds. It's a sign of his importance that in placing him, only strange and perfect works can be called to mind. If you want to place him, if you want to f find out where he stands, how 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 high he is, how how good and uh, you know. Uh, a person of quality he is then you know you will think only of great writers what is meant is that as shakespeare is great as as as, as uh, other writers are great wordsworth is great as as novelists are great fielding balzac tolstoy are great if you think of greatness then you will think of him so this kind of praise is not easy to get and if a uh, borges gets this praise living in not europe but away from europe writing not in english but but in spanish which is uh, uh, as compared with english is not uh, as well known and popular then you must know that this person would be of an exceptional quality so these are the you know words of praise uh, that uh, people give him and uh, they are well deserved because this person has that kind of aura about him his words have that kind of aura about them when he talks about the simple scene then he puts some magic into it and and you know that that, that magic you know uh, gives extra power to those words that he has written uh, in his short stories so uh, <coughs> uh, in this in, in this part let me uh, give an example of a short story which is my favorite one and uh, which is only 12 pages and uh, this, this you can think of the story as to what exactly it is there is a narrator in it that narrator's name is yu sun you know that this person must be from china and he is the main character he 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 is the eye in the he is the eye he he has that, that mode you know i went there i saw this and uh, he is generally uh, he he is uh, uh, employed by some agency as a spy and the background is the first world war then you know he has to go and uh, find out from another spy as to what happened at a particular time in the war he also carries a pistol and uh, if if that person does not give him a correct answer he might kill him when he goes to meet him there that other spy also is prepared to meet him so he also carries a pistol and he might kill him now this is how the story begins who will kill whom is the question and there is a third person where uh, you know the, the, that person is there and he is also keeping a watch on them so maybe this other this other person kills one person or the other so there is a kind of, all of them are carrying some weapon in their hand uh, in in their pockets and they, they they might kill now this is a story that is very close to detective fiction isn't it and the story begins this way that you know uh, somebody said it and uh, he prepared in fact a report and the first two pages of the report are missing and in the middle of the third page you know uh, starts and this is how the third page starts and then you know uh it is uh, said you know that that uh, uh, the, the person will travel from his own place to uh, another place and uh, he'll be followed by the other spy how will he reach there well to cut the story short finally one is killed others are saved but that's not what the story is that that is only half the story the part is uh, that that is there is that <coughs> the idea in the story is different because the story as i told you in, in in the previous lecture he goes outside time so suppose two people meet at one place and uh, they want to kill each other who will kill the other one in the story only one person will kill but in the possibility the other person also could kill suppose the first person did not kill and the second one did what happens suppose they didn't kill each other but they killed a third person this possibility is there so the short story writer is to talk not only about one incident one character one decision the short story writer can go into 
the possibilities of all the situations and if all the situations are considered what happens then there is a killing and there is not a killing then there is peace and there is no peace then, then, then there is a story and not a story and life continues see the philosophical point have you ever have you ever looked at uh, the world like this suppose you uh, uh, <coughs> went to attend an interview and uh, you are taken for the job this is one kind of a story the other scene is that you went there but didn't get a job somebody else got a job then the story changes in the third case both of you don't get a job nobody gets a job there is a third situation and you know, this goes on and on now this appears to be absurd uh, when, when i say this then finally you'll say what kind of a story is this i don't like this as a story at all you can say this but in life this happens all the time in life there are many possibilities and all those for instance you went to you know uh, uh, take admission to a particular course you didn't get it you wanted to become a doctor and uh, you didn't get the uh, you know admission so you went and became a, an engineer after that your entire life changed if you had uh, got the admission in a medical college in the beginning you would not have been an engineer you would have been a doctor so in life you know there are 10 chances 20 chances and uh, only one chance is picked up but all chances are equally important this is the, this is the author saying and uh, uh, in this story you know the, the way he takes the train he goes to that place on the day on the way he sees that the, the other person is following him so he changes the train and uh, the other person then cannot follow him easily if the next train will come after an hour that, that he'll get so he has one hour to live so he goes there, there he meets a third person these people start discussing and they discuss a philosophy and what is the philosophy that somebody is a writer and has been writing a long novel this is called story within a story and this writer who is writing a long novel this writer doesn't write a novel he writes a short story but his grand grandfather was writing a novel in that novel he was uh, saying contradictory things in one chapter he will keep the person dead in the next chapter the person comes back to life so he started explaining you know the life's processes in this manner that the whole life on the planet is a kind of a long novel and uh, uh, each chapter is different each chapter goes against another chapter and yet life continues so this way you know the story is built up in such a manner that it's a story about death it's a story about life it's a story about following somebody it's a story about philosophizing it's a story about fantasies different kinds of fantasies you start dreaming as to as to what's going to happen and uh, his, his power of language is so strong uh, this, this, this power that he has is, 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 is so, so good you know that he can create a scene with three sentences he goes to meet this person he knocks at the door the person comes out and he recognizes him straight away and then he says would you like to see a garden and he says yes I would like to see a garden so he is taken to a garden and in the garden imagine the writer is the creating paths so there is one path you are walking on, on it and at some point of time this path is forked into two directions so it goes this way and that way which path will you take one path after some time this will fork uh, this will fork again so will you will take one path and not the other and this goes on like this finally you will come back to the circle because if you are following that taking the fork the left fork then once again left then once again left then once again finally you will reach where you started from and the story is titled this title of the story is the garden of forking paths now this, there is a kind of geometrical design here that, that, that he is following that the, the path go, go, goes in and split into two parts and one is taken and generally it becomes a circle isn't life like that that life is a circle people you know start uh, in, in ancient India at one point of time and then they start moving away from it and finally they come back to the same place this happens in life somebody who was a child yesterday becomes a parent today a grandparent tomorrow and then he will die and uh, the, in his death you know somebody else will take over so circle goes on the, the, the person who was, who was young becomes old the person who was old dies but in the meantime he has left a whole trade of uh, different people so this kind of a story and it's called the garden of uh, forking paths just imagine what kind of character he can create so the first character he creates is this of, of the Chinese who is Yu Sun he is the narrator 
The second character is Captain Richard Madam, who is supposed to capture him or to kill him, who would reach Albert's home he is, because he knows that this person is going to Albert. So, he will also reach there and within time to catch and arrest Yusun, he has to arrest him. How can, how can he arrest Yusun when he reaches there? He can arrest him only if he has committed a crime. Till he has committed a crime, he cannot be arrested. So, what happens is that when he goes to that house, he kills that person and when he kills immediately, this person enters and he arrests him and after arresting, he will be taken to the gallows, he will be uh, you know uh, killed there. <coughs> so, uh, there are two spies and there is a third who is also a kind of a spy and then the story is finally complete because everybody uh, is, is, is able to do one's job. The third person that I am talking about is Dr. Stephen Albert. He explains to Yusun the novel his grandfather Sui Pen had written. This uh, Now, you see the, the kind of uh, expansion that is there in the story. The person he went, went there to meet, this person was reading a novel by his grandfather, by the visitor's grandfather and uh, it was in many volumes and it was in Chinese. So, he got help from somewhere to get it translated. And then he uh, presented this uh, he, uh, the picture of, of that novel uh, to his grandson that is Yu Sun and uh, in the middle he started discussing all these things and finally this person says okay now is the time to kill him. So, when he uh, turns his back towards him then he takes out the pistol and kills him and at that very moment the other person enters and he arrests him. This is the story. Now, <coughs> uh, a few ideas about the story that the writer gives and uh, I was wondering as to what kind of story is this. This, this, this appears to me a kind of a philosophical comment and uh, just see the philosophical com comment in the middle of the story. For discovering the central point of certain labyrinths, now the word labyrinth is very important in the story. What does labyrinth mean? Labyrinth is a puzzle, uh, you know uh, you have to find your way uh, through a puzzle and uh, you know there are, there are directions that are given, but directions can be of different kinds and uh, finally, you are able to reach the end of the puzzle. So, the whole thing is a kind of a puzzle, life itself is a puzzle and uh, th this idea is expressed this way. For discovering the central point of certain labyrinths, now try to consider this construction of the sentence. There are labyrinths and there are many and there is a central point there. The central point is not known to anybody, but it is there. So, it is there, but not known this is a labyrinth, but there is not just one labyrinth and one lab labyrinth is giving rise to another lab labyrinth. So, see the kind of you know rigmarole that is created in the situations of life. Now, uh, I just uh, reproduce a dialogue by Stephen Albert uh, uh, who was, uh, to whose house Yu Sun our, our hero went. He believed that is uh, Yu Sun's grandfather, uh, Albert is telling him that his grandfather believed in an infinite series of times. One time I know, the time you know that, that, that I saw let us say uh, for 40, 50 years ago, the time that I see today, that time I know. Do I know some other time also? No, it is not possible to know, but there are people who know the other time. So, which time is more authentic? Which time is more important? This is a question we have never faced. This is a question we have never in fact asked ourselves as that everybody has one's own time and this, this, this time has a different place and who knows which time is better than the other or more authentic than the other. This is what he is saying. He believed, his grandfather believed in an infinite series of times in a growing dizzying net of, now the nature of the time, divergent, it will go in different directions and then next, next word is convergent, all directions will move towards one point and parallel. So, time is divergent, convergent and parallel. Parallel means they will never meet and they will all you know go together. This network of times says Borges, this network of times which approach one another forked, broke off or were unaware of one another for centuries. For a long time you know the times intersect and go their own ways and nobody knows where they went and for centuries it happens, embraces all possibilities. So, this, this kind of open time, this, this, this kind of time that has many faces, that has many directions, this embraces all possibilities of time 
and then says the uh, and then says Albert uh, on behalf of uh, this person's grandfather, we do not exist in the majority of these times. The times were there, but we never existed then. In some you exist, in the in one situation you exist, and not I. In others, I and not you. In others, both of us exist. In the present one, he says, and now he is going to die. In present one, which is favorable fate has granted me, you have arrived at my house. In another, while crossing the garden, you found me dead. It is possible this person came to meet him, he was there, he talked to him and he said, suppose you did not come inside and uh, or, or somebody came and killed me, then you would find me dead in the garden. In still another, I utter these same words, but I am a mistake, a ghost. It is possible you, you, you have not gone there and, and touched him and you have not seen whether this person is there, maybe he is a ghost. So, what does it mean? It simply means that all these times have to be understood in a specific context and outside the context, the times will be different. Is it a story, yours? Is it, is it a philosophical tract? Is it an idea? Is it something that staggers your imagination and you start thinking of something else? Think about it. Literature always does the same thing. If you, if you, if you go deeper into it, literature is not real. The stories that you hear, they are not real stories. No, nobody, no, nobody behaved that way. The writer with the help of words was writing these stories and uh, those stories were the figment of somebody's imagination. They were your imagination at work, your heightened imagination. You were excited. Out of excitement, you saw a ghost where none existed. But because you saw it, therefore you write about it. Is it correct, incorrect, wrong, right, real, unreal, illusory or present? You have to ask these questions. So, in, when you come to literature, then all these questions become real. And so, the writer is telling, in fact, all of us that this is what literature is. It is the creation of imagination. Now, suppose you you, uh, you make, give, give the story to a writer, no, 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 not you and me who, are, who may not be writers, but you might give it to a writer. The writer will start saying, I do it all the time, but I, I never thought about it this way. That you know, you create something, you could have created something else. So, that way, uh, the, the, this thing can help us understand the very nature of writing, very nature of literature. And this writer in the 20th century was a master craftsman. He could create the story uh, in which there would be a death and who will kill whom that was not important, nor was it possible to tell, possible to know and therefore, the writer was going on and on with the story. Every step that his character takes in order to meet his enemy, that step is captured very well by language, with the help of language. So, which means that all unreal things are made very interesting in the story. So, you, you read and you read on and on and you just do not know who is going to kill whom, but finally, one person uh, is, aims the pistol and kills. And then the writer says, the opposite also could happen and then you would be imagining that not this person, but the other person would have killed. Tell me about this story. Uh, does it make any sense to you, uh, Asmita, <coughs> this kind of a story? Hello. Hello ma'am, good, good morning ma'am, good morning sir. Hello. Yeah. So, Hello, there is a question, yes, just a minute. Yes, please tell, good morning. Yes, ma'am, I want to ask question. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I want to uh, know that. Can you please tell your name, please? Yes, ma'am. My name is Pawan. Okay. Madam, I want to know that how is lit literature represented in George Louis Borges' literature? How? What literature? No, how is liter literature represented in George Louis Bor Borges' short story and his, and his, and his fiction? Uh, sir, the person is wanted to ask how literature is presented in this uh, writer's uh, literature, like George Lewis Burgess literature. Yes, Pawan, uh, I have uh, understood the question and it is a good question you asked. You see, literature uh, in this case is created by Borges in such a manner that it starts uh, making you feel, uh, making you wonder, making you asking questions and uh, you know, there are many possibilities. So, if uh, uh, possibilities are added to an actual situation, then literature becomes different. So, in a way, uh, this writer is telling you about the many possibilities that literature hides in itself. 
and if, uh, if the writer is uh, you know the writing a story to tell you then he is himself creating literature so pawan i hope you have uh, understood the question and uh, please keep asking uh, in the future also and uh, uh, then you uh, viewers we uh, i come back to the point that i was making that uh, uh, literature so far as borges is concerned uh, is 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 a bundle of questions it is it it's it's, it's, it's many queries it's also a kind of wonderment that you know you 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 seem baffled and baffling is captured and uh, in this case you know the, 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 there were possibilities and time was taken and there were many times not just one time all this you know showed that it was very close to life and yet was not real so this is the power of uh, uh, borges in this particular story it's a it's a uh, well known story in in the literary criticism circles uh, and the title uh, let me repeat is the garden of forking paths paths are never one or two they are many in fact innumerable now the other story that i can think of uh, and this is called the library of babel this is another story now this story is proper essay this is a proper you know uh, article type of a story because the writer is discussing the very uh, nature of literature for instance uh, the one thing that uh, is clear in the story is that it's about language and knowledge have you ever thought about language that, that 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 you speak that others speak how do you learn from how how do, how do i learn from uh, somebody uh, 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 through the language somebody asks a question from me how do i understand the question now it is it's a, it's a easy question uh, because you 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 ask the question and i i know what you have said therefore i interpret and tell but then actually you have not asked the question you have only made some sounds and those sounds you know are are codes and and these codes you know uh, tell me that something is being said and i guess the meaning and when i guess the meaning then then then, then i ask answer the question when i answer the question then also i'm using words which are also codes and then you also guess so who is telling whom what is it something real or both of us are guessing each other so this is the kind of you know problem that uh, this writer is facing in the story here and he has in fact not just talked about language he has talked about the library library means a lot of things library means that these books were written by people and when they were written then all the sound patterns were given the shape of letters shape of language and then you know they were they were put on page and then they were kept in the library and at different points of time different things were kept when did printing in history occurred there was no printing earlier i think it some somewhere in the 14th 15th centuries so in the last 600 years or so there has been printing and libraries uh, came up before that libraries would be just in the hand written uh, in the, with the, with the full of hand written books but modern libraries all have the printed page now this printing thing has lots of problems you, you never think about it i never think about it but there are problems what is the problem how should i write a word should it follow the sounds and uh, well when when the sounds are there then then how do how do i uh, standardize the sounds what spelling should i use uh, there are 25 26 letters and in 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 uh, in, in the roman you know a pattern and the, with these 26 uh, uh, letters you are able to uh, capture all the sounds and 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 you can also you know say okay this sound means this so finally there is a word how this word you know uh, has to uh, choose the letters in order to make them a cluster because the the, the letters themselves you know are, are are not even sounds in 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 that sense unless you tell yourself so it's about language that's the first part it's very difficult to read a language secondly knowledge what is knowledge knowledge is something that you have heard and uh, you heard other things also then you start comparing the two then you move around in life and see whether what you understood about the word is there in life or not yes so uh, i think uh, um, the, i'm i'm just uh, 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 doing this uh, story this is called library of babel and it's about language the range is around 500 years 600 years when writing printing standardization of spelling communication practice defining views etc came into vogue earlier this wasn't there so the writer is talking about the very history of language and uh, you know knowledge 
knowledge as in writing and present preserving in books is viewed in terms of hexagons. Now, this, this is the uh, this is the, at the center of the story. There are hexagons, uh, you know, six sides of, 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 of a geometrical figure. Pentagon has five sides, triangle has three sides, but hexagon is six sides. And hexagon means that uh, lines can go in different directions. So, one hexagon takes you in the on the left side, another hexagon goes forward, the second the third goes on the, on the right side and later on they also become hexagons. So, the whole picture of life, the whole picture of time, the whole picture of space can always be measured through hexagons. Now, is it completely in disarray or does it mean something? So, library, the symbol of uh, the library in this short story is a symbol of life. So, in fact, the writer is talking about life, life is uh, writer is talking about its uncertainties, its many scopes and views and the way I understood the story was finally that it talks about freedom because we are free to move in this hexagon to that hexagon. So, do not think that one hexagon is the final thing or second hexagon is the final thing. You just make your own choice and when you make the choice, please be sure that the other person may not agree with you. Which means it is the world of free people. Everybody will make one's own hexagon, one's own picture, one, one's own story and each will be as good as the other one. So, uh, I hope uh, th this kind of a difficult writer, but a fascinating writer uh, has given you some ideas about writing, ideas about literature, ideas about uh, short stories, fantasy, opinions and uh, this way you know you can wonder about the world in which you live, in which we all live. Thank you. Thank you so much sir for such interesting lecture. Dear friends, we will be continuing such lectures in the same series word literature in future also. So, for uh, such lectures, interesting lectures, please uh, write us on info.cc at the red gmail.com if you have any suggestion or query regarding our lectures and stay tuned and keep watching. Thank you so much sir for this.